everyone and welcome to the boopcast. I still had the chat open on Skype and they couldn't see you for a second there. <laughs> oh no. Welcome to the boopcast, episode 17. We're really organized this morning. <laughs> it's it's all brand new. Yep. Yep. We are your host, She Noob and Corey. And with us today we have special guests from Twitter, Essie Bessie Jess. Hello! And most of you know Larissa from Nerds of Oz on YouTube. Hi! And Discord and Twitter and Ruby Amino, etc, etc. Good morning, Everywhere. Chozo. Welcome. I just said Corey has started watching. No shit! <laughs> <laughs> I've also been on your Twitch channel for like an hour now. Yeah, it just told me like, Corey has started watching. <laughs> like, <laughs> sure, okay. So, uh, yeah, this is the first podcast of Volume 5 with guests. Yay! Clap your hands for guests. Yay! Um, hi, Cinder, Yay. welcome. Oh, people are still doing that slash Y thing. It's driving me nuts. Still? <laughs> so, <laughs> what? Uh, Jess, because you're uninitiated, so um, somebody made a joke in my Discord uh, about Yang losing her arm. And, uh, spoilers, oh. but... <laughs> and, um, so they started oh. typing their Ys with just a slash, because it's like the arm is missing off the Y. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can't believe it's still going. <laughs> Chozo, stop. Stop that. I see you doing I'm... that. <laughs> I'm just... I'm gonna go on Twitch and see this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, um, so my, uh, my viewers are sadists. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, let's start the Mine podcast. Mine are pretty evil as well. So, for those of you who don't know who Jess or Larissa are, uh, starting with Jess, could you please tell us a little bit about who you are and how you got into Ruby? Okay, I'm Jess, as you know. Um, I'm just a normal girl on Twitter, just tweeting away. Okay. Huge Ruby fan. Mm -hmm. I let's see how I got into it. I've heard about it in 2015. Didn't like the animation at that time. Don't know why. But last year, a friend of mine told me to watch it. She got me into it, pretty much. And, yeah, ever since then, I've been showing all my friends Ruby, because, hey, it's an awesome show. 2015, <laughs> what volume was that, guys? Help me out. Three? Yeah, that was three, three I think. Three. I think it was oh, three, my. yeah. Yeah. Then the two. I can yeah. understand why you didn't like the animation because it wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. From volumes one to three, animation not great, except for the fight scenes. Um, yeah. We don't mm. talk about volume three's fight scenes though because they're bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Larissa, uh, for any person watching this who for some reason doesn't know who you are, <laughs> could you please explain? Well, I'm not... <laughs> I don't really think I'm that well knowing, but um, yeah. Yes, Amongst well, my I'm... viewers, you yeah. probably are, yeah. We have the yes. same viewers. Uh, <laughs> we, we do. <laughs> well, I'm also known as... <laughs> Chose. I'm also Chose. known as and um, It's a Boz. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm a Ruby tuber. Like I'm like she noob. Uh, so I do a lot of Ruby stuff on my channel: reactions, unboxings, discussions, some AMVs, shorts, all sorts of different things. And also do yeah, gaming on Twitch as well. Which just started doing that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I got into Ruby. Oh, it was probably around 2015 as well. It was around the end of 2015, and I just saw a clip of the Ray trailer on Facebook, and it didn't have what it was. It just had just where Ruby started fighting the wolf. So I'm like, what is this? This looks really cool. And I saw the comments it was Ruby, so sure enough, looked it up, and I binge-watched it, and I just fell in love. Mm. And, yeah, it just all went from there. <laughs> well, <Yeah>. become <laughs> obsessed. <laughs> most of you Very are very obsessed. Know, but Corey and I are Ruby dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> well, dinosaurs. Watching since, since the red, red trailer, trailer was, was released. released. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But they were the trailers are the best ways to get into Ruby. They really like, are. If you tried to yeah. if you tried to start with volume one, it it would be really hard to like mm. stick it out. Yeah. 
because it's it it takes a long time for anything to really happen in volume one <laughs> anything worthwhile mm-hmm. exactly. but imagine mm. watching volume one as three minute episodes every week waiting for it to come out because that's what we did <laughs> yeah i'd be yeah, very impatient survive. yes it I wouldn't was survive horrendous either. Yeah. Oh, they, Rooster Teeth had a lot of people like the hell at the time because people yeah. were like, "You made us wait a week, wait a week for a three and a half minute episode." The hell. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Alice plays and stop gold. Welcome. Um, ten Hi, viewers. Alice awesome. Plays. Hi, everybody. So we will begin the podcast. I just realized I didn't get my notes out. <laughs> oh no. So I don't Why have do notes. This every week. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. I was, oh! The Halloween freaking alerts are still on. Thank you, Alice Plays, for the follow. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot to change the alerts to the Roopcast alerts. Sorry about that. Not oh, changing it now. Right. Scared the crap out of me. Um, yeah, Jess, I, I've been playing horror games all month for October, and I have uh, Halloween uh-huh. alerts on, which are the chibi Halloween episode gifs with screaming. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. So that just scared the holy crap out of me. <laughs> and I'm the only one who can hear it, too. What? Yeah. Um, That's hilarious. It's designed to scare me, but just not during the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that's embarrassing. So, chapter two. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Um, but, dread in the air. Yes, yeah, dread in the air. Um, very appropriate. They should have released that the episode this weekend, so it'd be right before Halloween. Yeah, I feel like it's about to get worse before it gets better, though. So don't hold your breath. Yeah, I mean, the, the intro literally says that. Yeah. <laughs> Things yes. looking bleak and they're bound to get worse. Yeah, no kidding. Um, mm-hmm. So, beginning, uh, we'll go scene by scene. So beginning with the uh, scene with Leo and Watts and Salem and Cinder. So, uh, I mentioned a couple of times after we saw the intro for the first time that uh, I thought those red tendrils were the Seer Grimm, and this episode confirmed that it was the Seer Grimm, and also confirmed what the Seer Grimm actually does, and it's a communication device of sorts, so it's like a crystal mm. ball, essentially. Mm. So, now uh. now we can all stop scratching our heads about the Seer Grimm, so that's nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, also, the thing in- that has me... <laughs> wondering yeah. is she salem talked to that thing in volume four about reinforcing our numbers at beacon or you need whatever. to stop reading my mind because that's the next thing i've written down <laughs> so yeah so, salem was so talking like, oh, to it was she talking it to chapter two of volume four yeah i think so. yeah yeah at the end yeah so who was she talking to it's the qu- big question now because she said to the Seer Grim, reinforce our numbers at Beacon, the relic is there. So she was talking not to the Seer Grim itself, but to someone through the Seer Grim. So who mm. was she talking to? Was she talking to Adam, maybe? Possibly? I, Don't honestly, I think it so. would, I think if anyone, it would be Neo. Maybe Neo, like, of yeah. all the people in Vale that we know of, Neo was, is the only one within like that faction that is still around. Because, like, uh, Cinder's uh, Mercury and Emerald, they were with Cinder. And, yes. you know, Roman's dead. Roman's dead. And uh, also, Adam was in Mistral at the time as well, so it couldn't have been him, necessarily. I'll take a stab and say it's going to be the new character that's going to be announced in the Ruby Ball game. Yeah, new that's villain. true. So, uh, Ruby Combat Ready, the yeah. board game, for anyone mm. who doesn't know, has been fully funded mm. with all stretch goals. And that means that they are going to be adding a character to the board game that's going to be in a future volume of the show. So somebody we get to see early and, and uh, spend a lot of time speculating over who they are, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, and get to see a little bit about their weapon and what they can do. So that's going to be interesting. I haven't backed the game yet. i got to do that. Like, the second I get paid. Five I'm... days. Yeah, I know. I've only got five <laughs> days left. There's only yeah, five got a few days, days left. left. So head on over to the Kickstarter um Mm. I'll pop the link in the description for YouTube um, and back the game so that you can get a copy. Yeah, so... And you get extra stuff oh. too if you back it. Yes, you do. Uh, mm. That Chozo won't be just, available later. Chozo just brought up a good point. If it was Neo, that would explain why Salem got no response. That's true, yeah. That's true, because Neo's a mute. Yeah. Mm, yep. Interesting. Well, we think. Basically. Well, I mean... <laughs> they still haven't told us. 
Actually, at RTX London, somebody asked, is Neo going to speak? Because somebody asks that every year, every RTX. Yes. Um, and yeah. Miles' Miles's response was, don't you think we would have made her talk by now? So, <laughs> I guess we can assume that she does not speak. Chozo has already backed the game. Good on you. Um, so, I, okay, so Salem here, when she was talking to Leo Lionheart, she said that he's been extraordinarily brave, which I thought was a huge, like, oh my gosh, no, he has not. He's been nothing but a no. coward since we've met him. No, I don't know. No. But, but she's so manipulative, and that's what he wants, is to be brave. Mm. So she's, yeah. she's manipulating him. Yeah, she is, mm. big time. And he, he's, um, he's allowing himself to be manipulated because it's easier than trying to uh, fight a fight that he doesn't think they can win, which, to be fair, they're losing and losing big time. Um, I mean, Beacon's already fallen and Haven's probably going to be next, so... Yep. But the fact that well, he's looks like Haven, isn't it? bending mm. over and handing it to them... I think he feels yeah. like if he just... Um, if he just goes along with it, then it's going to spare his school and his students. But I feel like he's going to get a rude shock. Because... Uh, I'm, the thing yeah. I found most surprising is she literally in front of all these... In front of him talks about how you guys are going to go get Sprang, bring her here, get the relic, then call in Hazel, and the White Fang will destroy Haven. Yeah, that's like, literally comes what to destruction. she said. Yeah. She literally yeah. says that. And so it's like... Yeah. I, when that happened, I was like, why is he still helping her? Like... I figured he was, like, basically just going to give her the relic so he could spare his school. But that's clearly mm. not Salem's plan. Is no. Maybe just to spare him. Exactly. Like, is mm. he truly himself. only trying to save himself? Mm. Well, there's some other motive somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Has to be something, some other reason. He's oh, being no. extremely foolish about the whole thing. Um, mm. I feel like they're going to set up some kind of redemption arc for him, which I'm probably going to roll my eyes at. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. They'll probably do something really at the end and then get killed off or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. That's, yeah. Like, give him a hero's death. Well, they've already yeah. started the death wheel for this volume, so. But we'll get to that in a minute. Um, yeah. <laughs> Salem says to him, Don't forget everything I can do to you. And this line felt like it had a lot more meaning mm. behind it than just what it sounds like. Um, yeah. Mm. Salem is such a wild card we know nothing about her uh we mm. know nothing about her nature we don't know whether she's human whether she's grim whether she's a mix between we know nothing Johnson. still a mystery so um yeah it's all a mystery exactly um i noticed mm. upon my third viewing of the episode that there was a slight bit of lucis notori in the score there when the seer grim was choking leo which Oh, I, I didn't love that. that score for the Grim. So I was happy to hear it again. It's just so good. It's there was so lots good with of the Grim. for the Knuckle of E last volume. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh man. <laughs> love it. Love it. Um. So, I think something we can all agree on is that Salem does not give two shits about the White Fang and what they want. Um, no. She yeah. is just blatantly using them and their strength and using Adam. Mm. And, uh, again, they're bending over for her. I don't know how she keeps doing this. Well, p I know, because people are stupid. But <laughs> it's the long and short of it. But they she doesn't power. give a crap about what Sorry. White Fang wants. She, whatever her end goal is, that's all she cares about. She doesn't care about yeah. Cinder, Watts, exactly. none of them. She doesn't give a crap. So, no. Yeah, everybody is just playing right into her hands. Because the question mm. is, what is Salem's end goal? Does she want mm. to be all, an all-powerful god and rule over what's left, but what's going to be left when she's done with the world? Or does she just want destruction, pure and simple? Well, the Tale of the Relic says if you have all four relics, you can basically recreate the world yeah. or end it. Mm, so, yeah. I mean... Mm. She's got some sort of plan there, whether it's to, I don't know, like, I, whether it's, like, fill the world with Grimm or fly, destroy it and create a new world or what. Yeah, <laughs> but she's, that's the question. It, it's something like that. And yeah. it's probably also some weird god complex, too. Mm. 
Who knows what her deal is? I'm sure we'll find out in four volumes time. <laughs> um, uh, also, Salem said for Cinder and her team to go meet with Watts. So her team being Emerald and Mercury. So confirmed, we'll mm. finally get to see more Emerald and Mercury. Uh, hopefully, maybe they've... Neo. Yeah, I was going to say that too. Maybe, maybe Neo, Neo's included. Possibly. There. Yeah. Usually it teens for people, but... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, hopefully they fixed Mercury's eyebrows. Because <laughs> they destroyed them based, in Volume 4. <laughs> based on the intro, it looks like they did okay on his eyebrows. Yeah, I mean, I we, saw really him, we saw him very briefly, and Emerald was absent from the intro, which annoys me greatly. Mm. Um, especially if they're going to be yes. more involved this volume, they both should have been in the intro, mm. but, you know, I guess they yeah. didn't want to... Even if just briefly. Away. Yeah. Maybe they couldn't squeeze her in there. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they tried. And just what more Emerald and Mercury? They were such good characters and then they mm. just pushed them aside because there was too much mm. else to get to. Annoying. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm. And Watts is going to give Tyrion a new tail. Now, what do we think about this? Mm. Because do we think that he's going to build him a prosthetic mm. tail, grow him a new tail? Or Corey's suggestion was steal a tail from another scorpion faunus. Oh, yeah. think I was thinking more two ways. It could either be something grim related. Mm. So thinking is like the um, um, Merlot of the Ruby verse, yeah. um, or something more tech related. Mm. Seeming so, yes, he seems to be very tech yeah. with like the phone and the hacking and and all of that. Yeah. So what's, that was my two ways. What strikes me as the tech guy, definitely. Yeah. So, so tech. a tech. Scorpion tail could be very interesting, and mm. well, yeah, mechanical, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the thing, the reason I brought up the whole, um, the like scorpion, you know, thing is because his name's Doctor Watts. So I was wondering, mm. like, obviously that's more of a reference to mm. Doctor Watson. Mm. I can't help but wonder if Watts mm. isn't also like an electricity thing because of the way it's spelled too. Yeah. So maybe there's a little bit of like Frankenstein in him. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> That's so, a cool thought. Something yeah. like that. I don't know. It was just something I was like, maybe? Mm. Creepy, but cool. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, mm. Watts says to Leo that the students aren't pushovers, but they kind of are. <laughs> like, Tyrion kicked their ass last volume. If it wasn't for Crow, they I would think... all be dead. <laughs> well, he doesn't know that. <laughs> But I think no, it's more the fact that they managed to beat him, or Ruby managed to cut off Tyrion's tail, so... Mm. Yeah. I was actually surprised Even Crow that... did all the work. Yeah, I was actually surprised that Crow said the students weren't pushovers. And it were... when it comes to fighting Grimm, they're more than mm. capable. But when it comes to fighting somebody who is stronger than they are, they're useless. Mm. Um, mm. Even as four against one, they were utterly useless. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, Crow basically had to run in and save all of them single-handedly and almost died because of it, so that didn't go very oh, well. Yeah. But Tyrion <laughs> seems to be a trained fighter, almost like a, a trained assassin almost, so yeah. I guess like they were to fight against bandits, there might have been more of a chance, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> no, I mean, we Maybe. saw Tyrion fight Crow and he matched Crow. So, mm. yeah, that's scary. He's obviously mm. very skilled. Yeah. Um, mm. Mm. Salem says to Cinder as well that Ruby has learned to harness her gift, and she has not learned to harness her gift whatsoever, her silver eyes. I thought she, she, said, she, said, she said if. She if. did say if. If Ruby has learned to harness her gift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She then used she had to it, protect her own. She yeah. used it once by accident because she watched her friend die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is not harnessing her gift. <laughs> no, no, whatsoever. no. No, so she's mm. got a long way to go. I, I hope that they're going to bring more of the Silver Eyes into it now because I feel like it's going to be yeah. the difference between yeah. them winning and them losing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. With Cinder especially. It's, it's obviously yeah. an extremely powerful gift. Mm. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's. I mean, especially I think now that Oz pins back in the picture, mm-hmm. I feel yeah, like I he, he'll too. he'll push for her to learn. And I feel like Crow's been hesitant because of something that happened to Summer. And mm. I'm still hoping we'll learn more about Summer this volume. We need to know more <laughs> about Team Stark. What happened? Yes, it's driving yes. me insane. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. We need to know. Um, Don't yes, think it's going to happen this Summer. Volume, but... What happened with Raven? Just what happened? Mm. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, so, and Salem says at the end that she wants to have a word with Tyrion, and I, just, I was just like, uh-oh. <laughs> that doesn't yep. sound good. Because <laughs> the last time we saw Tyrion and Salem, she, she was mm. like, you disappoint me. And I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> that is just... And then uh, that very disturbing scene with the Beowulf, which I still can't watch. I'm just like, it yeah, disturbs that's... me so much. He's it's very disturbing. Insane. He might be more of a psycho I... than uh, Adam, but at least he's more balanced no. than Adam is. Mm. Yeah, it seems a bit more balanced, I think. Yeah. Uh, um, I would have mentioned before we moved from this scene, I just thought it was so funny with what's tapping the sea grim, like, is this thing on? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Cinder, can you see us? <laughs> oh, yeah, I skipped right over that. So Cinder's talking again. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. And um, what's is like, ah, oh, she's recovered. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goody. <laughs> oh, goody. <laughs> yeah, so Cinder has got her voice back mm. and her mojo, presumably. presumably yes. So we're going to get to see her back in action. Um, mm. Is her sleeve bothering anyone else? Her big long sleeve that's longer than her arm? Yes. Yeah, yes. it's bothering me. I still yeah. think something's up with her arm. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, how mm. is that possibly like practical? Mutated or something. I don't know. Because it's just, it's so long. It's like, you can't even see her hand. <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah, I think there's a reason wrong. behind it. Mm, yeah. Probably, yes. Okay, so moving on to the Weiss fight on the ship with the Lancers. Woo-hoo! So this was amazing, Woo! and we're going to break it down. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, when I saw the floating islands in the uh, trailer for the volume really reminded me of Pandora from um, uh, mm. help me out, what's the movie called? Avatar. Avatar. Uh, Avatar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is the planet on which the Navi live and there's floating islands there and I was like well they've obviously drawn inspiration from that but um, what keeps them afloat is, is big gravity dust crystals which is really cool. Mm. I love that idea. Mm. Um, just massive black crystals sticking out of the islands. So that was yep. uh, cool to see. And the other thing I noticed is that there seems to be no one else on that ship but Weiss and the pilot, which seems a little strange to me. <laughs> like it's well, I think be... because it, it's, it's um, more like a cargo ship. Yeah, uh, ship, and I think it's just more like um, he's um, agreed to transport uh, Weiss to Mistral, as uh, like we saw at the end of Volume Three. You, you know, mm. he said, "Oh, um, I can't guarantee that we'll be, get you there all the way." Like he was like doing it really like he's almost smuggling her in. Yeah, he is actually smuggling as, her. As we saw later, he he's mm. literally a dust smuggler. Yeah, yeah, so. we had all this dust. Yes. So um, <laughs> yeah, he's like a Han Solo kind of figure, I guess. Which, yeah. but even mm-hmm. Han Solo had but, Chewie. Like, come on. <laughs> exactly, that's the same. But like yeah. most yeah. of the time, you see smuggler duos, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not like you've got the guy who does it, and then the lookout or something. Mm. Yeah, exactly. It just seems <laughs> strange that there's literally nobody else on the ship. And also, why is she spending all of her time in the cargo hold? Like, you know, <laughs> wouldn't you think the pilot would like some company? Maybe they seem to get along okay. So. Mm. Um, yeah, well, he he wouldn't go save those people. She was pouting. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I didn't think of it like that. So, um, one of the problems I had with the beginning of this fight was that the animation of the Lancer destroying that other ship was a little bit weak to me. Um, mm. Like, yeah. it, it just kind of blew up and it was all a bit too fast. And I was like, mm, how mm. did it do that exactly? <laughs> I would have preferred yeah. if it just tore yeah. it apart. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 That if it just tore it, it just... Yeah. Yeah. That would have been a little <laughs> more realistic. There... Yeah. yeah. There also would have been a chance there that for them to show, like, maybe even people falling and, yeah. like, almost more of a way to show, like, mm-hmm. this, you know, people died. Like, in this, yeah. there was just... Exactly. I mean, there wasn't even debris after it blew up. It just disappeared. It just vanished, <laughs> yeah. Into <laughs> thin air. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, I mean, you you get the sense that people were on the ship and they died because you hear the the woman calling for help on the on the um, thingy. What's it called on the radio? <laughs> Thank you, radio. <laughs> radio. What can I think of the word radio? <laughs> um, but again, like you get a, a bit disconnected from it when you see the way it's done, and it's like, mm, I don't know how that tiny mm. wasp just destroyed that big ship, but you know, whatever. Um, and. 
wasn't the Queen, because I think the Queen was on those islands which they went yeah, through the later queen, on. So. There's actually mm. a strange little shot in the middle of this fight where you actually see the mm. Queen's eyes light up, but you don't register that yes. it's the Queen. Yeah. It's a very, no, very yeah. short shot, and I only noticed it the second time watching. I went, oh, mm. I didn't even see it the mm. first time. Same. So. Um, I remember seeing it the first time. I was wondering. I, I think I even said my reaction. Oh, what is what is that one doing? Or what is that one doing? Or something or something like that. I can't yeah. remember. And yeah. then it wasn't until I rewatched it later. Like, oh, that was the queen, right? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because like at the time, I figured it was like the just one of the ones chasing them, going like, oh no, something, and trying to figure out a way to avoid it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I'm not keeping my eye on yeah. the chat. Um... <laughs> The Lancer just explodes and takes the ship with it. Yeah, that's what it looked like. Um, Kamikaze yeah. Lancer. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> essentially, yeah. I mean, so I, I love that we when uh, Weiss jumps down the trap door, we just see the end of her hair disappear <laughs> down yes. the trap door. Mm -hmm. Her hair is so long, this volume. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, that made me giggle a little bit. Uh, another question I had was, why was Mertenaster empty? Why was there no dust in it to begin with? Because she was, like, putting yeah, little canisters in her weapon and loading it. And um, I was yeah. like, why is it empty? Wasn't it full, like, when you left? Surely she would have loaded her weapon Unless before she, she left. Unless she was practicing or something. I, I don't, don't know. know. Maybe, Maybe she was some training. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it was just a little strange to me that they did that. Yeah, I, yeah, that was it, a I know that it was, like, to show that there was mm. dust canisters on the ship, but... Probably a little unnecessary to do that. Cause yeah, and then she was dropping them on the ground. Yeah. And and then they weren't on the ground. So yeah. she dropped them on the ground, showed them on her feet, and then and another then shot of her just yeah. standing there, they, they were gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, throughout the entire fight, there was quite a bit of, like, teleporting and things disappearing and reappearing. Mm, yes, even Weiss was Which teleporting generally at some happened. points, I noticed. Like, she was at the yeah, back of the ship, that, and then suddenly she happens. was at the front, and I was like, mm, what's going on? Um... Some of Weiss's mm. efforts during this fight were a little weird. There's one in particular mm. um, when she shoots three fireballs, I think it is, and it's just the strangest sound that Kara makes, the strangest effort, and I'm like, oh, God, that does not sound like a, a noise a human being should make. <laughs> like, it sounds <laughs> like she's being hurt. <laughs> It's that moment she goes like "wah" or something like that, is it? Yeah, it's like hmm, I'm like, why yeah. are you doing that? <laughs> it's just strange. Some of them were a little odd. The rest were fine, but um, Mirror Mirror was playing during the school, which was nice to hear that. It's yes. been a while. It's been a while <laughs> since we've heard it. Um, and this life is mine. Yeah, this life is yep. mine after that. Um, so the shot, the tracking shot behind the ship when Weiss was shooting out the homing ice dust was incredible. Mm. The one sort of longish shot there um, with the wasps behind and the homing ice going past the camera, it was a really well animated shot. The mm. wind physics were awesome, blowing her hair and her clothes around that looked really realistic. Um, yeah. Yeah, this Life is Mine score was awesome to hear because it's not a thing we've heard before. Um, except we heard it a little bit at the end of Volume 4, but it, just a tiny bit. But this was proper, mm. like, Alex Abraham. If and we had the rock part. Scored yeah. That, was going for it there, and I loved it. Um, yeah. Okay, there's a pose of Weiss's here that I'm sure you know what I'm about to say. She the dabs, and it is unforgivable <laughs> to me. <laughs> she, like, crouches <laughs> down when she's about to jump on her um, on her platform behind her, and she's completely dabbing, mm -hmm. and I know that that was done on purpose. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. that's funny. Uh, also, I found it interesting that Weiss just kind of casually destroys all of the cargo by shooting it at the Queen Lancer. Um, hi, Chris, in the background. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it it also just didn't really do anything it just kind of tickled the queen a little bit <laughs> yeah <laughs> it didn't, it didn't do much screw it. anything like, i would have rather if it had like done something like yeah. shown some of its armor ripped off or mm. yeah, it on fire had some damage on it but mm. it just mm. it's like anywhere. oh really hmm. oh that's yeah. interesting <laughs> a cloud of dust hello it's like it's like <laughs> she just dropped a bomb on you and you just went eh that was a lot of dust, and it was all different kinds yeah, of dust. It was. 
So surely that would have done something. Um, yeah. But she should then, have shown some wear. Yeah. We get to that point and this Life is Mine actually started playing and it sort of startled me a little bit because I was like, that's actually the song. Like it's the third yeah. section of the song where the rock <laughs> yeah. kind of speeds up a bit. Mm. Um, mm. But that yeah, was cool took... to have it in the actual episode. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it took me off guard at first and I just completely rattled me because I was like, it, the... The song, it, it, the song. <laughs> <laughs> you could not compute that this life is mine was playing, um. But they've done I it before. Excited. Like they, pl I kind of knew, I kind of knew it was playing because I heard the soundtrack. I'm just like, yeah, hey, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, right. it's coming. <laughs> it's be here. I love the songs. So. Well, I mean, they've done it before. I may fall was a song on the volume one soundtrack, and it was in mm. chapter eleven of volume three. So, but it really mm. fit really well there. So, uh, you know, you did. Um, mm. and mm. I guess like this life is mine. When it was in volume four, it was very, very um, unfinished, and it was just the part of the beginning, just like a very small section. And I guess when they heard what Jeff Williams did with it, they thought it was too good to not have in the show. So, and this was mm. a perfect moment mm. to use it. Um, Definitely. When Weiss summoned the armor, the particle effects were amazing. That when mm. he appeared, like all of the VFX done on that were awesome. They looked really good. Um, and the animation when the ship turned upside down uh, and Weiss and the armor had to sort of jump from the floor to the ceiling, that was animated really yep. well. Um, mm. Did anybody else get chills when the armor jumped off the ship and it was like, ah! <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my god! I was like, yes. internally, I think I was just dying. Up and down. <laughs> amazing, amazing effect with yeah. the song in the background because, mm. like, I remember mm. when Corey, when um, when that song was released ahead of the soundtrack's release um, this year, Corey and I listened to it for the first time on Skype with each other, and I was listening to this in Life Is Mine while you were listening to something else. I don't remember what it was. I think I was listening to the full version of the intro song. Yeah, that's right. Of Let's just live. Uh, let's just live. And um, mm. when it when it did that part, that I'm not your pet part, I freaked out. I was like, "Oh my god, Corey, you need to listen to this now!" <laughs> Very quickly became our favorite song on the soundtrack. It's just amazing. I never get tired of hearing it. Um, mm, it's an awesome same. song. So the it's armor, really good. yeah, it's amazing. The armor section of this fight here when he was using the glyphs to like sort of uh jump and hit the queen that was just mm. animated incredibly it was mm. epic to watch and then when he deals the final blow and disintegrates as the song comes to a close it's just i was just like this is perfect this is so amazing yeah. they couldn't have done yeah. this any better um unfortunately the ship did crash land anyway which we kind of predicted was going to happen um but the mm. last really cool thing they did with it was Weiss used her gravity glyphs to slow the ship down as it yes. was crashing. I love that. that. Mm. Not yeah. only is it a really yeah. cool idea, but it looked awesome. It was animated really well. The particles were spot on. Mm. Um, and it was, like, really real. Like, if, it, if you had the ability to slow the ship down, why wouldn't you? So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh. I just, I, I love the way that the, the glyphs warped and the way that, like, mm -hmm. it kind of started to slow down, but as soon as it broke, it kind of Sped picked up, again. up speed again, yeah. sort of. And it, it looked mm -hmm. so real with how the, mm -hmm. the way physics would have worked in that situation. Yeah. That I was just like, oh, oh man. Yeah. Awesome, awesome fight. Huge well done to the crew for this one. There are a couple of things that weren't quite what they could have been, but overall it was amazing animated so well. Yeah, it was amazing. The VFX yeah. were amazing. Mm, mm. So good. It was really a really satisfying Weiss fight after Weiss being out of commission for so long. So yeah. it was everything we wanted it to be, basically. Mm. Um, yeah, and Weiss has come mm. so far mm. as far as her semblance is concerned. Um, mm. If we remember back to Volume 1 with the Nevermore fight, um, she only, like, she launched Ruby and then put the glyphs all the way up the cliff so Ruby could run up them, and then she sort of collapsed, and that was all she, like, was yeah. all she had. And um, now yeah. we see her doing this, like, summoning, and uh, not only that, but teleporting her summon and slowing her ship down with her glyphs. Like, it's an enormous yeah. how far she's come. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. Any final thoughts on this scene before we move on to what happened next? <laughs> <laughs> 
I thought it was uh, interesting how when the knight first was summoned that he used to did a fighting pose rather yeah. than having his sword out. I thought that was yeah. funny. It, yeah. well, it was funny at first. I thought that's a little weird, but then like and they wanted to do the summon bit with with his sword while he was in midair, and then the shot that we yeah. saw in the trailer was used. So, which is an amazing shot. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So d- yeah. a little weird, but like. Yeah, it kind of, I guess it's setting up for, like, she doesn't have to summon the entire entity, she can summon parts of it, mm. which is interesting. Um, well, we already saw that when she just summoned the arm and the sword in Volume 3 as well, but that was by accident. Mm. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Really, mm. really amazing fight. I, I, I've watched it so many times, just that one. Yeah. Uh, just that one bit. <laughs> so I'm like, it's so uh, good. The- Mm-hmm. The only part of the fight I still have issues with is that part where she fires the fireballs out and then they like circle back and hit the like they, yeah. they circle and hit the island. I was like, how did she aim those? Really? Like I don't understand how dust works and I don't understand how West yeah. Semblance works. <laughs> um she yes. her her ice ones were homing as well, which we saw way back in mm. volume one. Um but like how does she do that? <laughs> is the mm-hmm. question is it because they're generated yeah, like, from her glyphs that she can manipulate them or like yeah I don't know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's still a thing where like with those ones she sees where her target is but with this she had no way of seeing it so that's why I was like mm, I don't know about that <laughs> mm. interesting yes ah you know Ruby it breaks all mm-hmm. the rules <laughs> yeah. it was cool nonetheless like <laughs> rules of physics <laughs> the rules of realism it just breaks them all (laughs) okay so the next scene sienna khan we finally got to meet her and then they killed her straight away (laughs) yeah i have a huge problem with this but we'll get to that in a minute so sienna khan is about what we all predicted she was gonna be um Mm. so she's a tiger faunus and um so slightly different from the kind of cat faunus that blake and her family are um, specifically Tiger Faunus. Um, mm-hmm. Adam's voice actor still hasn't got any better. <laughs> he still sucks. Yeah, I thought it didn't sound quite right. He's yeah. still awful. I don't like his new outfit. I don't like his I, new outfit. Okay, good. I'm glad you said that because I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I think it's terrible. Yeah. Ugh, it I might grow on me, but I don't like it. He looks like a <laughs> 14-year-old My Chemical Romance fanboy like <laughs> with the unconventional zips everywhere it's awful i like i loved the the kind of bushido style he had before with the suit and everything but now he just looks like a petulant teenager and i'm like why did they do that to him he was cool looking uh, before uh, oh, yeah i like his outfit before. i hate it mm. yeah. I hate the new one uh, i just don't i just don't understand the point of his outfit because it's just like it's basically just a bodysuit and then he's got a belt, or he's got two belts. One to hold on, like that little Scott thing, thing. Yeah. yeah, that has like really no purpose. And then the other to hold his sword. And it's yeah. like, what's yeah. the point? Exactly. Like, yeah. New outfit what looks is the so point? weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just uh, I, I don't like his new design. I don't see the point in changing his design either because it's not like we've seen him that much in the show. Um, no. We saw him in the Blake trailer and then not again until the very end of Volume 2, briefly. Mm-hmm. And then in Volume 3 mm. we saw him more, but it was only for the scenes with Blake at the end. And, like, we haven't seen him the enough flashback. to mm. get sick of his old design and his old design was better. So I don't see the point in changing yep. it whatsoever. Maybe he's um, going to a funeral. <laughs> he's he's perpetually going to a funeral. He's going to Sienna's funeral. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. He showed up for Sienna's funeral a little bit early. Yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> Hazel is a very interesting character. Yeah. We got a little mm. sneak peek of it uh, last volume with his interaction with Oscar at the train station, but he is a very interesting character. He's on Salem's side, but he's not fond of unnecessary... Uh, death or, or waste of life perhaps um, and yeah. he's very calm and collected uh, very sure in his conviction it seems yes, like ma'am. yes ma'am um, <laughs> yes ma'am he's a very interesting <laughs> character I'm looking forward to seeing more mm. to do with him um, mm. the only thing I didn't like about his appearance here was that he has a line where he says 
like me three times in a row and it's a little mm. bit awkward uh, just because of the way he pronounces the voice actor pronounces the words I was like <laughs> why does he keep saying that it's just sort of jarring my ears a little bit but yeah it's a minor thing um, yeah uh, I know I think he's I think he's interesting because as we found out last season he used to be Ozpin's friend Oh. And now he's not. Yeah. So well, I didn't so, say friend, just from his past. I yeah, I guess from his past, yeah. yeah. So I don't know if it was friend as such, but definitely, he's, yeah. No, he's asked Pin. Hazel mm-hmm. is definitely not inherently evil. So yeah. I, I'm very curious as to what's going on there. Um, mm. So Adam, I was annoyed here because I couldn't help but agree with Adam when he said the Faunus were the dominant species, because they are, yep. actually. They yeah. can do everything humans can do, and more. Um, yes. The problem is that they are, like, they're the minority when it comes to numbers. So, yeah. Um, but the way Adam was talking, like, this whole situation is so terribly familiar, because he basically wants to mm. enslave humanity. Um, mm-hmm. he, like he talks about humanity should serve the faunus, and I'm like, really, dude? Yes, really. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but I was gone mad. I know it was literally a thing where I was just like, you're literally like, like I understood Sienna Khan's point of like, you know, peace bred complacency, and I was like, okay, I can yeah. understand that. Like, you know, you need to kind of push things a little bit more so you didn't just stick with what you had. Mm-hmm. But it like. She just wanted them, I mean, at the end of the day, she really just wanted them to be equal. Granted, she wanted them to fear them, but, like, she still wanted them to be equal. Whereas Adam's, Mm. yeah, whereas Adam's just like, no, you know, (laughs) they're, they're, they're mean to us. We should make them lesser than us. And it's just like, I don't know. And especially, you're just kind of creating a ever, a never ending cycle of like, okay, you guys are subjugated, then they're subjugated, then you're subjugated again. And it's like, yeah. It's, mm. it's all this back and forth mm. of, like, why can't we just get along and love each other? Um, <laughs> but, you know, when people like Adam exist, it's a bit difficult. Uh, Dijan yeah. Bat has just said in the chat that Adam is turning into Jacques. The difference is Jacques <laughs> is a huge, big coward. Adam's not. Mm. No. Um, and Adam don't need to do is anything. very dangerous, whereas Jacques, I, I feel like he's all bark and no bite. Jacques is kind of like the Kim yeah. Jong-un of Ruby and Adam <laughs> yes. Adam is the is the Osama bin Laden, you know? <laughs> Mind you, Osama bin Laden's dead, so <laughs> um, can't wait for Adam to join him. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just a matter of art imitating life. Like we've seen this situation so many times. People throughout history have been enslaved by other people They've been mm. discriminated against. It still happens today. So we're, it's, a, it's a situation we're all very, very familiar with. And um, it's just human nature to, um, to want to dominate each other and to want to, to fight. Because there are so many people that believe so many different things and we just can't agree with each mm. other. But we don't have to, but most people don't realize that. Um, Adam definitely has a lot more influence with the White Fang than we previously thought. Um, yep. Because we originally thought that he was the leader of the White Fang until Sienna Khan was introduced, or the idea of her was introduced. Because um, yeah. he seemed like a leader kind of uh, figure. Um, Sienna's biggest problem, I feel like, was she was too complacent in her role. Like, she mm. talks about complac- the Faunus being complacent, but she became complacent as the leader of the White Fang. She thought she was untouchable. Yep. Um, yeah. Mm. And it was kind of all ripped away from her. Um, mm. And then Adam kills her, and I was just kind of disappointed because it's such a waste of what could have been a really interesting character. And, um, mm. and not to mention her, her design and her voice actress, who is a famous anime voice actress... Um, yeah. To just kill Monica. her after seeing her for only not even ten minutes was such a waste. Mm-hmm. Um, I mm. wish they would have. Especially had... just everything we've heard too. Like yeah. she was supposed, to, like the the person who, you know, is arguably set a lot of these events into motion. Yeah. You know, 
and mm. they she gets five minutes of screen time and she's dead. I know, it's <laughs> yeah. such a waste. Mm. And like her design was so awesome and you know, and the, really the VA is just such a waste. And like I feel like there should have been another scene with her before this scene occurred, but I feel like they don't have the screen time and that's the problem. Um Yeah. So yeah, it, it's it's a huge waste in my opinion. Uh, to be fair, though, when she fell down the stairs, that felt mm. and sounded really real. Like, the the, mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. the um, sound effects that they used and just the way it was animated, it just felt so real. Mm. Like, it was very impacting. It and it needed to be in that moment because yep. we we're all a bit, little bit like, did that just happen? Oh, just a little shock, right? Wait, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hazel a, was yeah. pretty yeah. upset about all of that occurring. Um, mm. Again, he's a really interesting mm. character. He like he was, he was kind of pissed off that Adam just needlessly murdered this woman, um, and didn't tell him that. And didn't tell him about it. Well. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, he was like, nobody needed to die today. So he, mm. yeah, he's going to be in an interesting wild card moving forward. I think it, it's going to be hard to predict what he's going to do next. I think. Yeah. I feel like that's going to actually throw him less out of favor mm. with, mm. or more out of favor with uh, Salem. Because, like, I feel like there is a sort of a weird thing with Salem's crew that, like, the reason that they work together is because there's, like, not really a lot of hidden information or, like, secret agendas or anything. It's like, we're all working on this and, like, you know, you just have to get out of my way, kind of. Mm. Yeah. But, like, for him to keep that from him and then suddenly just boom like i feel like they're gonna be like "Mm, that's not cool you you tell us what the fuck you're doing (laughs) yeah Mm. i feel like for hazel his um his uh what's the word i want camaraderie with salem is a matter of survival like he he knows that the Mm. world is fucked basically and he's not going down with it yeah so exactly yeah I, I don't know about him, how significant he's going to be going forward. We did see him fighting Renora in the intro, and whether that's a throwaway or mm. whether it bears significance to the volume is yet to be seen. But yeah, um, yeah. I got so uncomfortable watching Adam clean the blood off of his blade. Oh, oh man! I just thought I think it's like the first time you see blood. I think in the show. Uh, no, oh, so a little bit blood, on Chrome. There was blood on Mercury's legs, and there was blood on Yang's oh, arm. Yes. Uh, but that's, that's and right. there was blood on the dying huntsman last volume as well, and um, and crow's bandages and crow's bandages, yep. yeah, yeah. But those are the only ones. Yeah, but it's always yeah. been like wounds through bandages, pretty yeah. much is when we see blood. Yeah, crow showed it on his hand. Um, yeah, it when was he on his got, hand after he got stabbed. Yeah, he yeah. just grazed me, and he had blood on his hand. Yeah. and then after that, it was poison. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. God, that made me so uncomfortable <laughs> to watch. Like, look. Um, for some reason, gore in Ruby just makes me go, because it's just, yeah. it's, I'm like, this, Jarring. this used to be such a sweet, innocent, happy show, and look what they're doing to people. <laughs> I can't handle it yeah. still. Um, and now Adam is leading the White Fang, and there's a psycho in the front mm. seat, so that's great. Um, Which is dangerous. Very, yeah. very dangerous to have him leading the White Fang. Um, we've seen how formidable a foe he is, and mm. unfortunately, Blake is gonna have a work cut out for her as far as taking back the White Fang is concerned, and she has to confront him before this is over. She's got no choice now. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like Blake is heading for an arc where she wants to lead the White Fang, and, um, with Adam in the seat, you know, they're, they're building up to this massive confrontation. Um, which yeah. I don't think is going to happen anytime soon. Because well, I think something's going to happen when she goes public about the white fan. Oh yeah, something bad. Something is gonna bad's going to happen. I feel like that's. Yeah, gonna and I'm be, worried about Kira and Carly. That is going to be a chapter three thing. I feel like we're seeing Yang and Blake yeah. in chapter three because we saw Weiss. Yeah. Uh, we might get a bit of Ranger because we haven't seen them, but. Um, yeah, I don't think we'll see them for a little bit. No, I, I don't think so either. There's really not much more to be done with them for the time being, except for the Oscar sort mm. of side of things. Um, yeah. But I feel like everybody's ranged out after last volume as well. They got a lot of screen time. Everybody's blaked yeah, out. Yeah, we got a lot of them in chapter one. Too. Um, <laughs> it's nice to see that Blake is not being a screen horse so far this volume. <laughs> so far, yes. we've only seen two episodes. But Never. I feel like 
Chapter three is going to be a little bit of Yang with a lot of Blake. So, um, yeah, and it's going to be a lot shorter than chapters one and two as well, I think. Like about the 15, yeah. 16 minute mark, I think. So mm. there's only going to be mm. time for two lots of story. And I feel like it's going to be Yang and Blake and something terrible is going to happen. Um, yeah, I'm also really worried mm. for Carly and Gira, Larissa. I'm, yeah. I'm so mm. scared. I feel like Gira's not making it out of chapter three of life. Unfortunately. Yeah, I'm really worried. It's something I mean, maybe the White Fang's going to maybe attack them all when they're going yeah, public or something. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. something's planned. I'm really, I'm really afraid. Um, mm. Also, they they killed Sienna this episode, so that that's kind of them saying people are going to die this volume. Just be prepared. Yeah. And like mm. they killed a mm -hmm. character that we didn't care about, just to sort of prepare us for the fact mm. that okay, there's going to be death. This is not volume four. Like people are going to die. Get ready for some yeah. tissues. <laughs> yeah. Get the yeah. tissues out because I mean, it's all going to be bad. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of, I feel like this is kind of like what they did with Penny, where like people were able to like kind of get over. Well, not the Penny's death was less impactful because she's a robot. So we yeah. were like, she can be rebuilt. And we know that it's fine. She can be rebuilt, and she will probably be back. But then that mm -hmm. was preparing mm. us for the uh, the maiming of Yang and the consequent death of Pira. Who Pira? Mm. Everybody loved Pira, and to murder mm. her was to like it was sacrilege. And of course, yep. the the fandom was traumatized for some time after that. Like, yes. what did you just yes. do to our happy go lucky little show? How freaking <laughs> dare you! <laughs> um, all hell just broke loose. <laughs> all hell broke yep. loose. Speaking of all hell breaking loose, the final scene. Weiss is kidnapped by Raven oh, and her tribe. I was not expecting we that need at to all. Talk totally about this not. Because this changes everything. Everything yep. we've predicted up until this point has been thrown out the window in two shots, literally. Mm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we need to now rethink everything we've previously thought, including reunions, like just the way the story's going to go, everything. How is winter going to fit into the show now? Like, yeah. Oh my exactly. gosh, did they just turn the whole thing on right on its head? Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't see it coming at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah. I'm glad they did though. I'm glad they yeah, did do that because it's just unexpected. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, we don't want the show to be too predictable ever. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so they definitely threw us a curveball with that one. Also, if Raven hurts mm. one hair on Weiss's perfectly groomed head, I'm going to murder her. <laughs> I'm just going to reach through the screen and pull her head off because I am already mm. so sick of Raven. I already hate her so much. If she harms Weiss, I swear to God, I'm going to write a very angry email to Miles and Gary. <laughs> she, she touches my baby. I'm going to be mad. <laughs> like, seriously. Uh, I mean, I mean to be fair, she, she kicked already her kicked face. her in the face. Yeah, she kicked her in the face. Yeah, well. I'm already, she... like, seething. I'm like, Raven, I swear to fucking God, do not harm my wife. Um, <laughs> so it'll mm. cause a riot. <laughs> yeah, like, literally. <laughs> I'm I'm worried how Raven's going to act when she finds out that, you know, Weiss probably isn't as valuable as she thinks she is. She's not the heiress mm -hmm. of the Schnee com Dust Company anymore. Jax probably doesn't want her back. Yeah. So Corey mentioned how's this. that going to go? Yeah. I don't know. We were talking about it uh, outside of the podcast, mm -hmm. but it, Corey was saying how if they're going to ransom Weiss off to Jacques, I, we feel like he's not going to take the bait. Um, no. Yeah, he's just going to be like, it. fuck he, it, she's he on her own He could spin now. this. Yeah. Uh, he could he could spin her her death at the hands of you know a mistral based uh, bandit yeah, group. Exactly. Yeah. Like he he could twist that into something that will you know start benefit a civil him. war. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. This relations is, well, between right, well, well, yeah. Well, now relations between Atlas yeah. and Mistral are already not good. We know that from what Leo's been yeah. saying. Yeah. Um, things yep. in the council are really tense. Things are tense between the kingdoms because of Atlas's dust embargo and then the closing of its borders. Thanks, James. Um, so and the last this, thing they all saw on TV. Yeah, this is the cherry on top that is going to cause a civil war between Mistral and Atlas if that's how this goes. Um, Jacques yep. is absolutely going to twist this to his advantage because that's the kind of person he is. Um mm. Yeah, and also now, talking about reunions, we have to rethink the entire timeline of the volume now, because 
originally <laughs> we thought mm. Yang was going to Ruby and then that wasn't happening, so that's not a thing. And then, like, now Weiss isn't heading for Winter. She's heading, she's with Raven and Yang is looking for Raven. So, obviously, the most yep. uh, obvious reunion that's going to happen first is Weiss and Yang, which is completely out of left field. Um, yep. So, and it's going to be interesting if Yang rocks up at Raven's camp and Weiss is their prisoner. She's going to be like, uh, mm. excuse me, what the fuck, mum? <laughs> <laughs> so let my friend know, be very, yeah, how she would react, yeah, yeah. But that is going to be a really interesting reunion to witness between Weiss and Yang there, because I feel like mm. as little as we were expecting it is about how little they will be expecting it. Um, like, the last person Yang is going to expect to see there is Weiss. <laughs> like, as yeah. far as Yang yeah. knows, Weiss is in Atlas. <laughs> so, oh well, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. And then um, mm. after that, the next reunion will be Ranger because Ranger now are going to go after Raven and her tribe. So all of the reunions are going to be centred around Raven. Mm. Um, unfortunately, Raven's going to be a very central character this volume, and I do not like Raven. <laughs> so, yeah. But this, I, I hate and I love when they do these things that flip everything on its head because now I'm like, well, great. I have to just rethink the entire thing, but also, like, that's kind of a good thing because it keeps us on yeah. our toes, it keeps us interested as well. Um, if they just did what we were expecting, it wouldn't be interesting. So, and it that's wouldn't it. be worth mm, watching because we would just know everything that's going to happen all the time. Um, yeah, so, going to be interesting moving forward. Uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering what's happened to Weiss's weapon as well. Um... Mm. whether she's going to have it or not moving forward. They, I feel like they'd probably take it just because they'd be like, A, someone can use this, or B, it's probably worth something too. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, we're not going to see There's Weiss not much, yeah. now, probably mm. until Chapter 4, at least. Maybe not even until Chapter yeah. 5. Because I feel like 4 is going to be Ranger Central again. Um, yeah. With maybe mm. a little bit of Weiss to just show us uh, the tribe and, and what's going to happen with that dynamic. <gasps> Excuse me. <clears throat> I guess it depends what we see with Yang next episode too, yeah, whether exactly. we find her coming across the bandits or she's still travelling towards the bandits too. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's it for the episode. Uh, does anyone have any more thoughts, something they wanted to mention about the episode? Uh, what did we think of the episode as a whole, first of all? I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> I just thought it was yeah, fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was oh, great. So many emotions. So many emotions. I was happy, and then I was shocked, and then I'm. Just, yeah. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it might be the best episode of the show to date. All right. Mm -hmm. As far as animation, as far as the fight scene, as far as the the twists and turns of the story. I feel like it's the best episode of the show, which is a big thing to say because there are a lot of outstanding episodes of the show. I feel like actually it might come a close second to chapter 11 of volume three, um, but it's a close second. So yeah, I still think mm. chapter 11 of volume three was the point where everyone went, okay, this show's not messing around anymore. Um, <laughs> Max, yeah. stop it. What is Max stop doing? <laughs> Rolling on his back on the floor. His <laughs> <laughs> up in the air. It's too cute. Um, Sorry. It's okay. Uh, yeah, so... Wow, that episode, yeah. I was not prepared for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I want to say something about my reaction. I was actually away in the city when I filmed my reaction, so it's in an apartment that's really echoey and filmed on my laptop, so it looks like crap. But I absolutely had to watch the episode when it came out, or I was going to get spoiled. So mm -hmm. I had to do it. I'm sorry it looks terrible, but we'll deal with it. <laughs> um, yeah, and the other thing is... And I had no buffering issues. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. I didn't either, because I was watching it on my phone as well. But um, mm. so. with everybody's Chapter 1 reactions getting blocked, um, this is a YouTube mm -hmm. problem. Not a Rooster Teeth problem. Stop sending Rooster Teeth angry tweets. <laughs> Please. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. In it's YouTube's co content ID system. Um, and presumably, mm. because 
Chapter 1 and the Yang Short as well were both shown at RTX London. There was a hard block on all of that content so that people couldn't upload it mm -hmm. ahead of time. Because um, people do that. Mm -hmm. And like yep. my Yang character short reaction has only just finally had its block resolved because there was issues with like I re-uploaded it and it got blocked twice and like it, it was a nightmare. But um, Bruce's right. teeth were Mine's very still happy. blocked. Yeah, your Yang short is still blocked, isn't it, Corey? No, my Yang short is fine. Oh, your chapter one I, is blocked. Yeah. My chapter one, um, yeah, and yeah. I, I did email them. Yeah, yeah so they'll should, usually should take about 48 soon. hours. Um, so yeah, my Yang character short reaction is available again or, if you haven't seen uh, it. And my chapter one reaction got unblocked yesterday. Did all of ours get unblocked yesterday? Yeah, that same time yeah. as mine. Yeah, um, I think most so of them all got unblocked. Mine, Larissa's, yeah. Kaido Dan's... Um, just about everybody's except for Arnold got unblocked yesterday. But then Arnold's yeah. Arnold's got blocked. Got blocked <laughs> last night. So like he avoided yeah. it what? first and then it got blocked. After everyone else has got yeah. unblocked. So we were like, what is happening? It's just a nightmare at the moment. YouTube's content yeah. ID system, it's, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's on crack. Like and it's not Rusty's fault. There's nothing they can do about it aside from us emailing them and being like, this has happened, can you please fix it? And they're more than willing to help us and more than willing to work with the the fans and the Ruby tubers to sort these issues out. Hopefully this is not a thing that's going to be recurring throughout the volume, but um, we'll all be holding our breath for when Chapter 2 goes up on YouTube and all of our reactions are being published. Because wh whether they get blocked or not, we don't know, so we're all going to be holding our breath and crossing all of our appendages if that doesn't happen. So, um, But yeah, just be aware of that going forward, that just about everybody's reactions will be a couple days late if this keeps happening. Um, but yeah, it's not Rusty's fault. They're doing a very good job of working with us to get the issues sorted. So, mm. fuck you, YouTube. Mm -hmm. Simply. <laughs> yeah, I, I, even, I, I said that in the email I sent to them. I was like, listen, I know this isn't your fault. Everyone else is yep. having it. Uh, I just I made my email short and like, I know this isn't yeah. your, your fault or mm -hmm. blah blah blah. Here's my email or here's the URL. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Fix also, it, please. <laughs> if you're watching this yeah. and you do reactions and your reactions are getting blocked. Just calmly go and you. What's the email? RT fan projects at fan projects. Oh, I think fan it's just projects. fan projects at roosterteeth.com. Yeah, yeah fan, fan projects, projects at roosterteeth.com. Yeah. Rooster yeah. I will pop it in the description for you. If you need to email them, you've had a reaction that's been blocked. Even if you've had an AMV that's been blocked, um, they'll hmm. unblock those for you as well. Any fan project that comes under their guidelines for fair use, and if you don't know those guidelines, I will put that in the description as well. Um, yeah, definitely good to read those too. Mm. Yeah, Arnold's wasn't blocked until everyone else's was unblocked. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and like, you you all know Arnold. He's the biggest Ruby reactor. And like, for his stuff to get yeah. blocked, it's it's not Rusty's fault, I promise you. So Yeah, exactly. Like, everyone's saying, oh, he's a favourite. It's like, no, he's just no, managed to block it, uh, dodge it so far. Yeah, I yeah. dodged it up until... I love streamers188. Thank you for the follow and for scaring the crap out of me. Um, <laughs> I was wondering why you suddenly paused. Yeah, you the, the, the follow popped up. I um, see it on the stream now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if you do reactions or you do fan projects, you've had one blocked, please email fanprojects at roosterteeth.com. Keep it simple and to the point. Just say, hi, um, I know this isn't your fault. You don't even have to include that, but... Uh, I've done this fan project, it's been blocked, include the video URL, say thank you for your time, mm -hmm. and then just send it off. And they will, they won't respond to your email, they'll just unblock it for you. Um, yeah, so keep checking I, it, I got, won't get I got an automated response email. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, got, I, literally, I hit send and immediately was automated response email yeah. came back. Yeah. That's just them but letting it, you it, know, that'll... we've received your email, we'll review your, mm -hmm. your case, and uh, in 99% of cases, the video will be unblocked within 48 hours, so... Um, yeah. yeah, just keep checking it. If it's <laughs> Unicorn of War, thank you for the follow. <laughs> um, <laughs> I gotta change that freaking GIF, man. Um, yeah, you do. I can't believe I forgot to. <laughs> so, yeah, if it hasn't been unblocked by about three or four days, then file a dispute straight through YouTube and make sure that you mention in the comments that the video is blocked at the time of you filing the dispute, just so that there's no confusion around that and they will unblock yeah. it for you. So. Yeah, that goes for AMVs, uh, shorts, um, uh, reactions, basically any fan project that mm. falls under the guidelines. So read the guidelines yep. very carefully and make sure that your project mm. falls under those guidelines.
and everything will be yep. fine. Um, yeah, even William's uh, chapter one reaction got blocked, and William's channel is tiny, mm-hmm. so like, yeah, it's just the content ID system on YouTube. Mm-hmm. It's been a nightmare. It's a, like, it's a bot. I yeah, can, yeah it's, it's just... just a bot. I can't even get my yeah. lyric video for the triumph up on YouTube. It's just not happening for me. So that's also up on VidMe if you want to check that out as well. Um, I'll put it up on YouTube at some point. I really don't know when. I apologize. I c- there's nothing I can do about it. Um, yeah. It's a little. I, I'm a little fuzzy on whether it falls under the guidelines or not, and I don't want to get a copyright. It should be okay for disputing. It should be okay. Yeah. Um, I've I manipulated yeah. it so night, much so. now; it's not funny. Mm. Um, and it still won't get like it's still being blocked. Um, yeah. Yeah. So look, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens with chapter two. Fingers crossed that this doesn't. Yeah. This isn't still a problem. I hope so. I felt like it was one of my best reactions. I'm really looking forward to sharing it and watching everyone yeah. else's reactions to it too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, fortunately, it hasn't really affected our views because it happened to everybody except for Arnold. Yeah. So um, and then by the time all of us got unblocked, he got blocked. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good thing it hasn't affected our engagement with the Ruby community uh, as far as reactions yeah. are concerned. But my Yang short has been seriously affected because it was blocked for over a mm. week. So that's unfortunate. Yep. Um, so I'd appreciate if you've already seen it even to just go over and give it a like, please. That would be helpful. Um, <laughs> okay, so crew, the episode of Kruby for this week. Uh, Jesse, you were first mm. member? No, I'm not. <laughs> so you won't have seen Kruby. So basically this week it was all about VFX and um, how they use the physics system through Maya and all of that. So the one thing I wanted to mention was that in Maya, which is the program they use to animate, uh, whereas they used to use Poser, um, that Maya has what they call a shatter tool. So basically when they have, uh, for example, the ship crashing into one of the islands, the uh, engine fills in all of the information for the island to shatter and collapse and it has all these small pieces of geometry that they can then track and have like dust come off of them or smoke follow them and then the physics Mm. engine takes care of the rest Mm. so basically impact and then the shatter tool takes over shatters the object and then physics takes over from there and the object will fall in a more or less realistic manner so that was really cool to see the way that mm. that works and it's it's really neat and it saves them so much time as well not having to do those things by hand having the the tool do it for them um yep. and rewind has not been uploaded yet i can't watch the live streams because they're at the weird time for me so um yeah but rewind has been uploaded i'm pretty sure but i'm pretty sure today, it was like but by last night it wasn't yeah. uploaded yet last night yeah. it wasn't yeah no, we were for waiting it. for it but it wasn't up um but I want to talk about last week's rewind because they had Lindsay on, and she said so, she said that she talks to her baby Iris in Ruby's voice, which is <laughs> it's so, so cute. adorable, <laughs> adorable, so cute. Um, and uh, her husband Michael tells her off all the time. He tells her to stop Rubying her, which is just so cute. Because Corey, Corey was wondering if like does she talk to Iris in Ruby's voice? And yes, yeah, she does. I know. So. I was. We were literally, yeah. we were on Skype while I was watching the video, and they yeah. started talking about her, like, talking as Ruby. And I said, like, I wonder if she talks to Iris as it. And then, like, two minutes later, they she said that. And I was just like, yeah, <laughs> good. I'm glad my answer, they heard my question, yeah. you know, two days before I asked it. <laughs> so cute. Um, no, we know Lindsay uses her Ruby voice all the time, even just by accident. Like, so mm. it's it doesn't come as much of a surprise that she does it to Iris. That kid, honestly, she's going to have mm. an interesting childhood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we watched Millie grow up as an Achievement Hunter uh, kid, so, and she's turned into tr- quite the interesting person, so, um, yeah, I still can't believe Michael's a father. I can't wrap my <laughs> head around that. I'm like, Michael Jones, really, I d- he was not the person I thought was going to have kids first out of all of them, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good dad. Like, I follow them on Instagram and they're always posting cute shit all the time about Iris. And I'm like, <laughs> she turned five months old yesterday as well, which is. I so can't believe she's five months old. I know, I that's know. crazy. She's already five months really old. It's really gone fast. Well, mm. she was born a month early as well. So, um. It's true. Yeah. yeah. So she should be four months, but she's five. Yeah. And she's a cute little button and we love her. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be cool to watch her grow up, definitely, as as, um, as fans. So, yeah, that's basically our program for this week. And guess what? We've only been going an hour and 11 minutes. Woo! Yeah. Woo! We wrapped that up so fast. Oh, my gosh. We got through everything. <laughs> So, mm. yeah, uh, any closing thoughts anybody wants to mention? Uh, any predictions for next week as well? What do we think is going to happen going forward with Chapter 3? Uh, I mean, my prediction for this episode is still pretty much the same. Is yeah. you know, It's going to be Blake-focused. We're going to find out mm. whatever. They're going to go public, and the terrible thing is going to happen, and then we're <laughs> yeah, probably going to get some yang. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what the terrible thing is. We just know it's going to be terrible. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I did say that my prediction was that, like, maybe there's some information hidden within those files that'll implicate Gira or something. Maybe, yeah. It's mm. possible. But... I, I just feel like the White Fang's going to sabotage it. Especially, oh, yeah. like, when um, um, Ilya was saying to Blake, you know, you need to leave Menagerie. And Blake's like, you've got to make me. And Ilya's like, oh, no. Like, I know. So she's like, she yeah. knows she's, she's going to have to make me. Blake is an so. idiot. Ilya was obviously uh. trying to warn her. Something is exactly. gonna happen. You need to gonna piss happen. off before it does. And Your player's not like, gonna work, Blake. Blake's yeah. like, Meh, actually... I'm stubborn. Meh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, that was one thing I noticed in this episode is that Sienna Khan called Adam short sighted, and I'm mm. like, Blake learned it from her mentor. Like, mm. Adam's yeah. short sighted, yeah. and Blake is short sighted too. Like, mm-hmm. Blake just she's so in the now that she just can't look forward. Yeah. Or even yeah. she's so stuck in the past, she can't look forward. Yeah, can't look <laughs> forward and too afraid to look back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, to, yeah, Blake, uh, I mean, she's going to have to learn it the hard way. That's the only way. Yep. And I'm afraid for Gira's life. So I yeah. don't think I don't think anything's going to happen to Carly because I feel like the fandom would riot. But <laughs> Yeah, Miles and Carrie know better. Yeah, I think they know better than that, yeah. I don't know. I really don't want anything to happen to Kali, but I still feel like she's still... Yeah, something could happen to her, too. I feel well, like William just more... said that the White Fang is going to frame Gira for Kali's murder, you sadist. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Mm. Um, oh, Tyrion's talk with Salem. That's a good point. I wonder if we'll oh, yeah, that's true. next chapter. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and maybe a little bit of Ranger. Mm. Yeah, Yang... I, I, I feel like it's a 50-50 whether it's going to be Yang or Raven in Chapter 3, but definitely going to be Blake-focused, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I still don't think Tyrion... I think the Tyrion talk will be a little bit later, just because uh, they don't... They, mm. Yeah, they they don't want to give us too much of the bad guys, because they, they have to, like, s- sprinkle them in a little bit here <laughs> and there. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I suppose that's our program for this week. I can't believe how quickly we got through all of that. Uh, I know. Uh, well, I mean, there was like an eight-minute, seven-minute. There was a fight in there. Yeah, there was a yeah. long fight in there. It was quite long. Yeah. It, was. it did take up a lot of the episode. Um, and yeah. then there was a lot of talking as well. So just sitting mm. talking. Yeah. Adam droning. I on. don't feel like... It was anything like, I feel like everything that's been said and done hasn't been weighted at all. Like it's had a purpose, which mm. is good. It's nothing to fill up. Yeah, mm. yeah mm. exactly. They, mm. They're good. definitely being more careful about what they do and don't show in this volume. Yeah. Because volume four yeah. fell really flat <laughs> as far as its pacing was concerned. Um, yeah. There was too mm. much Blake, nowhere near enough Yang. Um, th- there was not enough of the right stuff that was shown. Um, mm. and like, no, let's just not even talk about chapter five. Uh, <laughs> now to read the nine minute episode, like, excuse me. Yep. I did not ask for nine <laughs> minutes of Blake for one week. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, well, I thought yeah. episode eight was worse where it was literally 20 minutes of just exposition. Oh, mm. episode eight mm. was horrendous. That, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so boring. Like, the first time you watch it, it's like, okay, this is really interesting. But the second time you watch it, it's like, I'm just going to skip mm. all of this. I, yeah, exactly. Yep. <sighs> yeah, boring. Um, <laughs> it's nice to know, but there are more interesting ways to deliver that information, I feel like. Uh, instead of mm. sitting around a campfire, uh, just talking about it. And there was Blake in that mm. episode, too. And then the next yes. episode was all Blake. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we had all four of them in um, episode nine. That's true. We did. Yeah. That episode, episode nine was great. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I felt that was really good. Yeah. Episode nine and ten were definitely the best ones mm. in that volume. I thought. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um. Yeah. So it definitely looks like the pacing has gotten a lot better already than the first two chapters, <clears throat> and they're being really careful about what they show. So. Mm. <laughs> Corey's phone is ringing. <laughs> Corey! <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> uh, Corey, you're not going to make me edit the podcast, are you? <laughs> okay, you know what? We'll just, uh, we better wrap this up before um, any more interruptions occur. <laughs> Bye, Corey. <laughs> That's fine. We'll wrap it up without him. Um, so, thank you so much, Jess and Larissa, for joining us this week. It's been a pleasure having you. Um, yeah, and uh, next week for chapter three, we are having Indie Revolution and Stormy Copa, the creators of Ruby the Abridged mm. series, on. So that will be good. Awesome. You guys saw Indie wa- was on last volume, but Stormy hasn't been on yet, so that'll be good. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you so much for joining us, guys. It's been fun. It's been fun. Yay. It's been fun. Um, also, That's make been... sure that you follow both Larissa and Jess on Twitter at Nerds of Oz and at Essie Bessie Jess. No, just Essie Bessie, isn't it? Essie yeah. underscore Bessie. Yeah, Essie right. Bessie. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, oh, look, Corey's back. <laughs> God damn it, Corey. Are we going to have a single week where you don't get interruptions? <sighs> I thought so. <laughs> it was Sid on the phone too. She knew I was streaming. She literally said, I'm so sorry, I know you're streaming, but we're locked out. Please let us in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose I can forgive you for allowing your family into the house. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're going to wrap this up now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to tune into the podcast every Wednesday morning. This is on a Thursday because Larissa had a day off today. So, um, my fault yeah it's your fault how dare you um no we love having larissa on so we wanted to put this just a day later just to allow for that Corey needs new Mm. double glazing yeah no kidding (laughs) what does that mean double glaze like glass for like sound um sound sort of uh dampening yeah um oh but the phone was right there (laughs) yeah um you just need to encase your room in just a big bubble (laughs) Just so nobody can walk in or out. (laughs) I locked my door this time. No one was getting in my room this time. (laughs) Be sure to follow my Twitch if you're watching this on YouTube to tune into the podcast live every Wednesday morning, uh, Australian time or Tuesday evening for most other people. Um, That's who usually phones unexpectedly. (laughs) And (laughs) yeah, this... um, what was I going to say? I can't even remember now. You know what? I'm just going to wrap this up before I keep talking. <laughs> oh, that's right. We're wrapping it up for the last minute. We did a pre-show uh, icebreaker that's going to be an exclusive um, thing on VidMe only. The first one will be on YouTube just so everybody can see it. But if you want to see subsequent uh, pre-shows, you need to hop over to VidMe and follow that so that you can see those. And that is all for this week. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs>